It's official, America's new stealth bomber, the B-21 Raider, has entered production just two months after its first test flight. Now, why exactly the U.S. Air Force is confident enough in this aircraft to let Northrop Grumman move forward with building production bombers is not exactly clear, but I can make some educated guesses as to exactly what is going on behind this classified veil. But first things first, the B-21 Raider is America's new stealth bomber in development, following in the design lineage of the B-2 Spirit. And although the B-21 does look a lot like the B-2, it's actually quite a bit smaller and is intended to fill a much wider variety of roles. The B-2 Spirit is basically just a stealth, strategic, heavy payload bomber. Its job is only to fly deep behind enemy lines and deploy conventional or nuclear payloads against strategically valuable targets. The B-21 is designed to do that job, but also to fly as an intelligent surveillance and reconnaissance aircraft, a spy plane, more or less, while also being an encrypted communications node for ongoing battle networks. And maybe craziest of all, there are a number of reports now that suggest the B-21 will even have some limited air-to-air -air capabilities, allowing it to fly limited missions as an interceptor and not just a bomber. This aircraft is even intended to be optionally crewed, meaning you could even fly these B-21 Raiders as remotely operated UCAPs. But despite the crazy capability this aircraft is expected to bring to bear, the craziest thing about this program to me so far is the fact that it's been on time, on budget, and moving even faster than some of us expected. Now, we know for a fact right now that there are at least six B-21 Raiders at some stage of production, one of which is not meant to be a flying aircraft, but is just a taxiing prototype, and five more that are meant to be flying test articles. But even those test articles are actually expected to become operational bombers because Northrop Grumman is so confident that their design is already battle ready. Now, a big part of the reason for that is almost certainly that this is the first bomber the United States has developed in the 21st century. And as a result, this aircraft was not only designed in a computer environment, it was tested in one as well. And today's simulators can really run an aircraft design through an entire testing regime long before a single bolt is tightened. And that's exactly what Northrop Grumman did with the B-21 Raider. But if you ask me, they likely also got a big head start with the RQ-180. Now, if you're not familiar with the RQ-180, I don't blame you, because it is among the most highly classified stealth aircraft in the U.S. arsenal. It's intended to serve as a very stealthy intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance aircraft, flying at extremely high altitudes to spy on adversaries while relying on its stealthy design to ensure it's not detected or shot down. Now, we don't know a ton about the RQ-180, but it's believed to be about the size of an RQ-4 Global Hawk, giving it a wingspan of maybe 110 or 120 feet, just a little bit smaller than the B-21 Raider. And we also know that it is an extremely stealthy flying wing that's been in operational service for years, giving Northrop Grumman some very recent experience in developing and fielding just this type of aircraft. In fact, I would not be surprised to learn that there's a great deal of commonality between the RQ-180 and the B-21. If not on the exterior, then almost certainly on the interior. Now, the B-21 Raider is expected to enter service by the end of the decade, and as far as we know, it's actually still on budget, though its price has increased over the years. Back in 2010, in the early planning stages of this program, it was expected that B-21 Raiders would cost about $550 million a piece. Now, by 2019, that price was adjusted to $639 million, and then in 2022, adjusted again to $692 million, which is where the price sits today. Now, that is a significant increase, but it's worth noting how much inflation has increased over that same period of time. And in fact, if that $550 million figure from 2010 had just been subjected to today's inflation, the B-21's per unit cost right now would be closer to $780 million, meaning somehow the B-21 has actually gotten cheaper over time. All told, the U.S. Air Force intends to buy at least 100 of these bombers, using it as the new backbone for the U.S. bomber force and maybe a whole lot more than that. And it is downright unprecedented to see a stealth aircraft program like this move so quickly and stay on budget. Usually, they can't do either. So this really could set the bar for the next generation of stealth aircraft if Northrop Grumman can keep it up.